Welcome to the All About You podcast. My name is Sheila and I am your host. In this podcast, I invite everyday people to tell their stories of their travels, passions and what makes them happy. So if you have a story to tell, please contact me on allaboutyoupodcast at yahoo.com and let's tell your story. So now for today's conversation. Welcome to the All About You podcast. And my guest today is Rick Terrian from the US, who is the director for the, the Center for Ageless Entrepreneurs. Rick, welcome to the All About You podcast. Thank you, Sheila. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Now, Rick, can you tell us a little bit about you and what you do? So sure, I've been a lifelong entrepreneur since I was a teenager. I'm in a 60 something now. Uh, and I have started businesses across for-profit, non-profit, social ventures my entire life. I got, was fortunate enough to have a book published last year, and it's about entrepreneurship in the second half of life. It's called Ageless Startup, start a business at any age. And rather than just hawk a book, a group of us got together and decided to form a non-profit so we could put a structure in place for older entrepreneurs to meet and greet and kind of get to know one another and networking at, at a pace that's appropriate for them. Uh, we think this is a good way to gin up new work among them, but it's also a talent pool for people looking for experienced leaders uh, that can come in and put together a team and drop into a situation for a year or two or whatever it takes uh, without having to build up a, a full workforce. Uh, now there's obviously ways to beat that, but uh, many of us in this age group don't want to be working our 60 and 70 hours anymore. So having a refuge, a place to meet and greet and learn about new jobs is uh, an appropriate landing spot for us, I think. I'm hoping to make it just that. I think this is really interesting because we all tend to look at retirement as that nirvana. We tend to think, okay, when I'm retired, I'm going to do this. When I'm retired, I'm going to spend more time doing that. And I believe you need to plan your retirement just as much as any other thing in your life. And I think it's really interesting what you're saying about people using their skills, maybe not wanting to do, you know, the full 40 hour work week or, or above, but helping other people and also keeping themselves in in the workforce, but in a, a maybe more appropriate way to how they want to live their lives. Exactly right. And, and we are, as a demographic, living significantly longer. And there's a not everybody's going to want to start their own small enterprise. The, you know, it was something like 25% of the demographic in the U.S., where there's maybe 100 million in that cohort, uh, about 25% said that they would like to start a small enterprise. And it doesn't, it wasn't like when we were growing up, when this was a big, deep financial commitment. You can start a small nonprofit or a social venture, something uh, for a community you love or a market you love, an idea you love. Uh, to support that and support it on your terms. Uh, and oh, by the way, make yourself a little more resilient as you go into that later life. I mean, I think this is the thing, isn't it? You meet people that have got a hobby, something they enjoy doing, and maybe they would like to sort of expand it somehow, but they're not really sure how to do that. They don't know anything about marketing. They don't know anything about selling. And is this where your organization will sort of give you, this is the pool of skills we've got to help you with these things? Well, sure, but it's, it's we don't necessarily want to make it into a training base. Uh, th that will be available through all of the members, but there's those, those training kind of ideas and where you skill up, um, that's available in all kinds of ways. What isn't available is a marketplace to get in and meet and greet and start to do some business with your peers. So let's say new members just come in. She's in her 70s. She's a strength trainer uh, and doing it out of uh, Northern California uh, and would like to expand. And now we can introduce her to people in 
Valencia, Spain, or in London, or in Miami, that may be looking to skill up and do a, a similar kind of operation, where our new member has this wonderful um, track record of organizing businesses like that. So meet a peer, learn about something new you might do, maybe join with them, maybe just work with them. Um, it's, it's wide open, there's no prescription for it, but what we do wanna do is take the friction out of doing business with one another. And um, I think keeping it in the general demographic of second half of life is one way to do that. I think it's really interesting. I mean, I think particularly during the pandemic, so many people have sort of been looking at what their work-life balance is, their work situation, the work commute and stuff. And I think this has given people a lot of opportunity to really look at that and think, is this really what I want to do? And we're hearing lots of younger people are saying, OK, this is the perfect time to sort of start my own business. But this is particularly interesting, the same sort of thing, but of people that are, are older, you know, maybe of people of retirement age. Uh, and in fact, there's a, I was just looking it up while you were asking the question. There was a great article came out in Yahoo News this morning talking about this significant number of people still leaving their jobs. It was just to your point, Sheila, is this general impression is this is all young people hopping in and out of new spots. But this article went in and categorized this and says, and in fact, it's the more experienced older workers that are leaving. This leaves companies with a massive skill gap, uh, not entry level positions they need to fill. Um, these are older workers who want to start taking care of themselves, and taking care of their work-life balance, their own mental health, and, and to apply their, their skills and their talents to projects that they deem worthy and important. Uh, it's a big deal uh, for older workers who have lived under a different kind of regimen our whole lives where jobs were scarce. Well, right now the experience is scarce and competence is scarce. and being able to pull it together and repurpose it and bring it back out in new pickup kind of formats, uh, team formats. Well, I think the world is just ripe for that. I think that's a very interesting point. Because the world is so global now with technology, there's nothing to say that, no, you cannot be working with somebody in another country using that wisdom you've built up over the years, using that the technology, which is quite young to a lot of older people, getting used to Skype, Zoom, and other technical ways of communication and, and sharing ideas. So it's it's a learning process for older people as well. I mean, how how do they cope with all, all the new technology? Well, in in any fashion that they choose. If you don't want to put up with it, well, you know, it's going to be a little more difficult, but. Um, you can find partners, like-minded individuals, but most people, I mean, these technologies are just seamless now, most of them. So what the idea is, is that it's similar to a pickup basketball game, is that if there's a local champion in Cheltenham, England, who has a project that they really want to get off the ground, but they need a team, they could come into this experience pool pull out a chief technical officer or a chief mar or a landscape architect, you know, any of these things. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be a nuclear physicist here. It can be a landscaper. Uh, there's lots of people that can participate. And then that pickup basketball game uh, supports that local champion. And then as time goes on and they're not as needed, they meld back into the labor pool, the talent pool, and the person in Cheltenham is off and running. So can we talk about some of the success stories you've had? There's a number of them, but you just make sure that everybody knows that they have access to this. This is what I mean about it, not necessarily meaning to need to be a nuclear physicist to do this kind of thing. I had a good friend who uh, worked in a pretty intense job. It was construction and there was all kinds of deadlines and insurance and forms and government work. and a lot of pressure, uh, she, and she was very good at it. But she was also one of 12 children when she was growing up. 
and made her own clothes and kept at kept her seamstress skills as she grew older. And she did a little project for a friend of hers that she took a grandmother's great grandmother's dress that was moldering in a closet and no nope, none of the grandchildren were gonna want it. But I mean who's gonna throw out great grandma's wedding dress, right? Um, so she saved the fabrics that were available and made them into Christmas ornaments for all of that woman's grandchildren. And then somebody else showed up and wanted a bridal ring pillow. Uh, and somebody else wanted something made out of their grandfather's ties. And by the time she was actually ready to retire from her construction job, she had started and nurtured a small company. She calls it Heirlooms Again. And when she retired from her company, she had a two year waiting list of people who want have old family treasured fabrics to have them repurposed for something for the 21st century and the new generations. There's a skill that she cared about. She really loves the history and the of the families, you know, how that's coming through. And then saving those wonderful fabrics and being able to write out the provenance and give it with the gift uh, back to the family. That's pretty cool. And um, it was an expense out of her pocket of, you know, virtually nothing. She's got a little website. And yet here she is with her own business sailing into her retirement with a two year waiting list of customers. Tell me something wrong with that. I mean, that is just a magical story. I love the fact that utilizing something that was so precious at the time, but was sort of stuffed into a wardrobe. And, you know, we've all done things like that. And then this new life it's been given with all the love, attention and care that this lady did. And then how it's gone on from there. I mean, that is just wonderful. So that wedding dress was just, it was made into something new for somebody else, but then it was the birth of a new business as well. Correct, correct. And if we keep our expectations modest, I mean, usually I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this is not a really great way to buy shoes for the kids. Uh, it takes longer than you think. And if you and if you set outsized ambitions for what this is, if you think you're going to end up on the cover of magazines and, you know, people throwing hundred dollar bills at you, this is probably not going to happen. But somebody like Joan, who we were we were just discussing, um, she's got a resiliency and a strength now that she can carry on until she's 100. Um, and it will make her more financially resilient as well as involved with a whole range of kind of people coming and going and, you know, all the, all the churn that makes life interesting. What have you got planned for the future with your enterprise? Because obviously we're all sort of looking at 2022 now. We're not sure what's going to happen with the world's economy. We're not sure what's going to happen with how we're going to live with the pandemia, et cetera, et cetera. So what plans have you got for the business? Well, we've spent this year wiring it up. The book was published 2020. And so we spent this year wiring the thing up, getting the website up, getting the board of directors, getting it financially wired up to the system. It's a nonprofit, just taking the cloak off of the website, just now starting to take in new members. And there's a little membership tab on how to do that. When you, you come in right now, uh, for the time being, there won't be any membership fee. Just want to get the right balance of people and, and people who have some patience with our early stage here. But I think the idea is, is to start mixing and matching and start doing introductions. And I, we've already just begun that with the first handful of folks. And it's really exciting to see the conversations that are popping out of here. I, the idea will be to have online meetings and open it up globally. Uh, it will be in English, but initially that's everybody involves native language. But the idea is to hope to maybe get foreign language versions out. That's aspirational, but at least it'll start in English and they'll start online right now. And um, for all I know, there could be face to face convention style things like we all used to know and love. But um, under the circumstance, that seems a little difficult. So plenty of opportunities to do this online. So are you at the moment just linking people together in the U.S. or are you international now? Well, I've got a 
couple of people who have come in from the UK and several in Canada, but it's mostly English speakers. That's the limit of the people running it uh, for the moment, but we'll hope to get better. I think it would be, a, uh, I, I just did a podcast in Oman. I did one in Singapore. I'm trying to think of another place. I might have done one in Nigeria early in the year. It's wow. really getting fun. There's, I mean, there's interest in this all over. And I would suggest that as a demographic, these our cohort of really is interested in meeting people all over the world. I mean, what a great time. You know, we don't have the pressure of necessarily raising families and get to meet new people that come from all different backgrounds. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. So I think it's really exciting what you're trying to do. And I, your enthusiasm is coming through as in linking these people up together. We've got the technology to do it. The expertise is out there. And it's just, you know, matching the people together to, to get these enterprises going. Well, right. And the best part about this new technology is that um, they can match themselves up, right? They don't have to wait for me or anybody on our team here. Um, we'll have these generalized meetings and just do some speed dating. And, you know, we can do it in Zoom and all of these new technologies. Throw people into a room together, a couple of three people into a room together and have them introduce each other. When they come into the uh, Center for Ageless Entrepreneurs, I ask them one key question. I want to know their name and their email and all of that. But I want to know what they can offer to people in the group. Uh, this is the leave a penny, take a penny kind of an operation. I want to know how they can benefit their peers. And that's the, you know, you don't have to be a great networker to figure this out. You get into a room and you say, this is what I can offer. And maybe that person wants part of that. Maybe they just think it's interesting. Maybe they don't. And they just nice to have a conversation with you. Uh, and if you know, blew up five or 10 minutes and you do that several times and you come out with a couple of leads for some new wonderful project you're interested in, hasn't cost you any money. Hell yes. I can imagine there's going to be lots of interesting conversations going on in, within the enterprise of, of people just discovering what people's skills and talents are. Finding hey. someone who's got a similar interest. Well, I've had this idea knocking around, you know, for the last sort of 10 years in my head. Haven't put anything down on paper. Well, well let, let's have a Zoom and let, let's talk about it. Well, and there's and you've just touched on something that I think is going to become really valuable. It's it's a new feature. We're just trying to figure out how to embed it into the website, but I'm referring to it as job boards. So I know myself, I'm 60 something. I've got a full time startup job I'm doing here where I live in Pittsburgh. And I've got this startup going for the Center for Ageless Entrepreneurs based on the book at the same time. But I've also got two or three businesses stacked up back here. Uh, that I would love to get out, but I can only do parts of them. I'm an inventor. I used to work in manufacturing and engineering. So I can put up a board that says I have X and Y. In my case, it's a water technology, a water treatment. And I'll say, okay, I, I've got the intellectual property um, and I can, I've can. i got the history of the business and I've got some old contacts, but I need somebody who'd be interested in running with this and maybe managing it for a piece of the action. Let's get together and talk, talk together and put this uh, maybe we put a project together. If the um, network is working well and the friction has been pulled out of that as much as possible, then those kind of pickup games where you can say, oh, look, this guy needs a whatever, a manager, a, an accountant, a lawyer, and a, pick your poison. And, and I, I think they can join up and we can all start looking at each other as opportunities as well. You know, we're entrepreneurs. Maybe that person has a, an idea I could join. Maybe I've got an idea that person could join. It's, it strikes me that uh, there are so many of us. I mean, there's a, it just in the U.S., if we took the, just that 25% of the people who are interested in starting it, there's 100 million people. That's 25 million people who want to start their own job, their own business, enterprise of some kind. And let's just, for instance, say they've got 30 years of experience, 20 to 50, 25 to 55. Well, 30 years experience, I didn't mean to put you through all this math, but uh, it's a stunning number and I have to keep checking it. But 30 years of experience times 25 million people just in the US, that's 750 million years of human experience ready to apply to problems that exist. 
and then you pull in the rest of the world and it's not 25 million, but it's three or four billion, two or three billion uh, with times 30 years experience. I, that would break my calculator. I don't know what it is, yeah. but we there is all of this talent and knowledge and skills that not everybody wants to join the fray, but many of us do and want to apply them in our terms. And I think there's probably enough problems out there to uh, keep us busy for a while. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I think, as you say, going back to the lady making the heirlooms, such a simple idea, an incredible skill set she's got, because that type of work, I'm I'm sure, is, is very, very skilled. But it's a simple idea. And it's the sort of thing that would appeal to most people. But it's having somebody to sort of hold your hand, I guess. You've got this idea. It's been running around in your head. You might have a few things, you know, bits and pieces on paper. But it's wanting somebody, you know, I don't really know anything about this and I'm not sure about that. And it's going into that huge quantity of skill and wisdom you've just talked about to help hopefully bring bring that idea to fruitation. Well, right, and and that's a really good point, Sheila. Something to consider here is that, yes, there are many accelerators and training groups around that you can go in for a long-term training on, but here in the case of Joan, this is the woman with the heirlooms again, and many of us, we've had long careers. We know a lot about what what's what but we maybe have a specific question. That's why I think an organization like this is going to be really valuable. You want to come in and get an answer and get out and get back in the fray. And so Joan came in, she wanted to know, well, how do we get this website up? And then she had another question or two about some organization, but she got those answers and it was Zoom, off she went and uh, never looked back. So it's this idea of being able to ask your peers, but more of a problem solving than a training. I think is a probably good way to characterize it. I, I think it's an absolutely brilliant idea that you're doing. So, so interested. Is there going to be a follow-up book to the first one? Boy, that first one took a lot out of me. <laughs> I, You know, I, I can already see ideas for books coming out of this that are describing what I'm talking about now. The first book was a, it was a soup to nuts kind of a book. I, and I interviewed people all over the world, wonderful entrepreneurs in the second half of life. Their, their words and their interviews were actually, in my opinion, better than my writing. It's, they're really inspirational. But that all of that took a, just a ton of logistics of get, get, putting it all together. And my I, I had wanted to keep it a short and kind of a thin little book of inspirational more than educational. Uh, but my editor was tough, and uh, she made me uh, include all kinds of checklists that would be very boring in an interview like this. But when you get this book and you're thinking about it, you can put a post-it note on that page and open right to it and say, what are these 17 things I need to know about insurance? I think that I covered that then in that first book. A second one about this effort would be really fun to do. And maybe if I can just collect interviews uh, that would be like Tom Sawyer getting everybody else to paint the fence. I, I, it sounds like a strategy. It, it's just fascinating that this whole conversation, I think it's just absolutely brilliant. And, and I wish you all the luck with the enterprise. I think it's fantastic what you're doing. And I'd love to read the second book with more stories about Joan and, and doing her heirlooms. I think that is just fantastic. So, Rick, thank you so much for explaining about the book, explaining what your enterprise is all about, and, and good luck with matching all those people up. Well, thank you, and uh, I welcome all of your listeners to look it up at uh, agelessentrepreneurs.org, or the book is at ageless-startup.com. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Rick. Thanks for being a guest on the All About You podcast. Thank you. I really enjoyed our conversation, Sheila. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed the conversation. Don't forget, if you have a story you would like to tell, please get in touch. My email address is allaboutyoupodcast at yahoo.com and thank you for listening.